Uh, why hello there and welcome back to EU4. Today we're doing some pre-release content for the upcoming EU4 expansion Leviathan. This video is sponsored by Paradox. Thank you Paradox for sponsoring this video and for giving us the opportunity to have a sneak peek at all the new features. And today we are doing a one state challenge. Paradox challenged us to do a challenge where we can only have one state uh, and try to really uh, Use and abuse the new uh, tall gameplay mechanics. Uh, looking at concentrate developments, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And we're going to be playing in uh, Ternati uh, for this. Now, we are going to be playing on very hard difficulty. And uh, yeah, that'll be that. Now, it's a little bit of a disclaimer. Uh, I usually play in front of a live audience, so I'm going to be <laughs> incredibly awkward today. Uh, so, yeah, bear with me here. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna try to make this work. Uh, let's go Iron Man mode. Very hard is enabled. Yes, let's go. All right. Why did I pick Ternati for this specific challenge? Well, uh, Ternati has a uh, lock of ideas. This is gonna be very good for us. We have some production efficiency and goods produced. And why is that good for us? Well, because we are going to limit ourselves to the state, the area of the Spice Islands. Um, and this place has Clove, the new trade good. It has a value of eight. Eight, that's almost as good as coal, that is really good. Uh, and uh, this is pretty much the only place in the world where you can get it. Uh, so it's like right here, and these provinces where it hasn't spawned yet, they have a 56% chance of uh, getting it if we start colonizing this. Which, uh, you know, so that's gonna be good. Our goal for today would be to become a great power. Uh, at least that is... What we're going to try to do um, without growing bigger than this one state. Now we are going to be allowed to have vassals and I'm also going to... Well, in order to stay true to the challenge, I'm not going to have lots of territories as in area that I haven't stated. With one exception, I'm going to allow myself to colonize and uh, leave those areas as uh, territories because yeah, we're playing in Indonesia and there's lots of uncolonized terrain over here, so I'd like to make use of that. Also, without colonies, it's going to be quite difficult to get claims on people. Not impossible, but you know, I think it's more fun if we do allow uh, colonies. So, uh, also, we're playing as uh, Tanati and they have a cool little mission tree here. And this will allow me, like, if I kill Tador here, I can start to colonize. And, uh, well, you'll see how it works. Basically, we'll get to colonize quite a bit without, um, without actually grabbing a colonizing idea, like exploration or expansion. Um, and after we finish all of these missions, we can get an ex, uh, we can get a colonist. So, for free, just like that. Alright, so... Uh, there's a couple of new features that we're going to be playing around with. Um, in this patch you can now curry favors with people. So if for example Ming over here, we're going to curry favors with him. Very nice. And this diplomat now is going to slowly gather up favors on Ming. These are the same favors that you use to, you know, call people in uh, to wars. Uh, and if we have high dip rep and high opinion with me, then it's gonna go faster, we're gonna get more favors. And if you can get 10 favors on Ming, uh, then you can ask him for six months of his income, which is 459 ducats. Now, I have a lot of lazy diplomats a lot of the time, so this is great for us. I think we're gonna just park two diplomats on Ming all the time. Uh, two, because you need one to improve relations so it goes faster, right? And then you just uh, ask him for, for dockets and soldiers. Now he does need to have the money for the Like he needs to have the money in the bank. If he doesn't have the money, you can't, you can't uh, take it. Uh, so, but you know, the, the manpower thing, they probably have that. Uh, from little playtesting that we've done, uh, it seems like he, they usually do have the money though. So that's nice. Now, this might seem a bit overpowered, uh, but it, it's really not, if you think about it, because you used to um, spend 10 favors to call someone into a war, and asking for money is certainly going to be a lot cheaper. Like, six months of income isn't going to be as expensive as joining one of the players' wars, certainly, so... Uh, I like it, it's, it's, it's cool. We're also going to be fabricating on the door here, and let me just set up my estates. It's pretty much the same as what we... Uh, usually do. I'm gonna get myself the monthly 
Monarch powers. We're going to summon a Diet. Uh, let's see, turn out the base production at least seven. I'll take it all the way to the bank. I'm just go Dev this once using a Devin Edict. There we go. Land of Commerce, very nice. And I will sell our remaining crown land. Cool. Uh, we're going to get an event to get my crown land back. The estate statutory rights for the nobility. Uh, that will give my crown land back to 30% in exchange for some local autonomy. But that's fine because we only have one province. <laughs> so uh, and it, it, it can't have autonomy on the capital. So we won't notice it at all. Oh boy, we have a new heir. Akral. Uh, 430. Not liking that so much. Um, right, so the heirs are different now. They start with a uh, certain claim or a certain legitimacy and the legitimacy will slowly grow as they get older. So they don't start with like an instant 100 legitimacy and you can see the actual number too. So as you can see the legitimacy is growing quite fast here. Yeah, it's growing quite fast. Uh, I will want to get rid of this guy. Uh, so we'll do that right now, because that way, if we can get a new heir, he can already start growing towards becoming legitimate, right? The longer you have an heir, the more legitimate he's going to be, and the more legitimate, the, the higher your legitimacy is going to be when he eventually takes the throne. So that heir was not acceptable, so I'm getting rid of him. Now that does put our prestige at really low, but thankfully we can still just use this. Patriots of the Arts, very nice, and now... All of our prestige is back. Fantastic. So I'm gonna be... Wow. All right, so we can get our claim on Tador. Now we're not ready to go to war yet because uh, Tador has a decent enough navy and also we'll be fighting Bhutan, which will also have a navy. Let me just go take a look. Uh, they've got five galleys, so I'm gonna need like at least one of my heavies to finish. Maybe even two, because uh, we have <laughs> very low prestige from all of our <laughs> idiot children uh, that we had to throw down the stairs. So. Right, so I may or may not have accidentally stopped recording the game for like uh, ten minutes or something. You didn't miss much. I uh, sank part of the Tadori fleet and were busy sieging him down whilst uh, at the same time landing on Bhutan. All right. Also, I uh, kind of shrank myself a little bit so you guys can see the mandate. If 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 you're interested in that, I don't know. A lot of these things are important if you're doing a live stream, but they really don't matter if you're making a video. But that's beside the point. Uh, whilst we're here, let's go attack these natives. May as well. Uh, we'll be colonizing this province soon enough. After we annex the door, we're going to get an event that will allow me to colonize. And I really like uh, like these missions. It's so it's so cool to be able to you know play in this area and already start to colonize a little bit because you know instead of needing to wait for ideas and then to be railroaded into picking those ideas, now you can just you don't really have to, which is uh, it's really nice. Alright, some hit and run tactics here with our glorious heavy ships. He's got a very good uh, Melilla Mahat. He's got a very good Admiral there, but that's okay. We're sinking, slowly taking pot shots at the enemy navy. And now we just retreat out. And this is why I like heavies over galleys, at least uh, in this situation, because you can do little hit and run tactics like this. Uh, sink a couple galleys, retreat out, and go back. Um, now there is... The following enemy navies may disembark tubes. Oh, look at this little warning here. So, enemy invasion imminent. The following enemy navies may disembark tubes into your provinces. That is so useful. Like, <laughs> imagine if you're, uh, you know, fighting a war on several different fronts and on several different continents, and you constantly need to pay attention. You've got a cool little warning now that will tell you that someone's actually landing tubes. That's very convenient. Bit of a recurring theme. There's a lot of uh, cool, re convenient little um, warnings now. Like you have an unassigned merchant, for example, that's convenient. Of course, in this case, I can't really use my merchant because we don't have any or a trade bridge, but that's okay. All right, so we finally landed on Sulawesi. Now let's see if we can get a little lucky here and uh, not wake up uh, the natives here. And then hopefully we can make it to Bhutan without too many losses. Okay, well, that's a shame. You win some, you lose some, I guess. Uh, I guess we can just chill here for a little bit, recover my uh, meta morale, and then we'll try again later. Alright, so we just some recover. Let's try and see if we can't uh, take up Bhutan here. If we don't get unlucky, we should be alright. <laughs> and we don't get unlucky, very nice. Oh! 
Sugoida snare! Look at this! Rain brings fertility to the Spice Islands. Oh, lovely. Very nice. Excellent. Um, just in time, too, because we're about to death push for Renaissance, so that's very convenient. Wow, okay, we got Tidor first. That's interesting. Alright, cool. So we got Bhutan Siege down. Uh, I'm just gonna go peace out Bhutan first. Obviously, I'm not going to take uh, this land from myself because, uh, you know, one state challenge and all of that. I do want to stay as true to it as possible, so we're not even going to get uh, territories over here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go vassalize him. Alright, now we could pillage capital, but uh, if I vassalize him, I could do it anyway. Also, if you pillage capital... I won't be able to vassalize him because it's already being pillaged, right? So I'll uh, I'll just vassalize him. Pillage capital is really for if you're, uh, I don't know, you're fighting a war against uh, many different people from really far away. They have a nice big capital for you to pillage and then you can uh, you can just join their development. Uh, so let's just go vassalize him. Uh, I'm not going to make him give up his claims because we're going to want to make use of those claims. Just uh, end rivalry and some money. That's fine and dandy. Uh, let's get right into that. Yes, there we go. And obviously we are going to double up in size by full annexing Tidor. Very nice. Actually triple up in size, but that's beside the point. We have to wait a day to actually set the speed software, so let's do it. Very nice. Full annexation has been achieved. Alright, let me start that core. 17 months because it's the same culture group. And now we can finish our first mission. Defeat our rival. If we wish to establish an empire in the Moluccas, we must move quickly to eliminate rival kingdoms. Let's go. Very nice. Now, uh, this will allow me to colonize one of five provinces. Obviously, we're going to colonize the one stated province that we have. And we have a 56% chance of getting that super overpowered trade good, the Cloves. And so, uh, let's just hope that we're going to get that. I think we are. I think we are. Through the magical power of editing and burning, we are going to get that Clove there. It's 56% though, so I don't think it's going to be, uh, it's going to take a very long time. Alright, let's go get ourselves some new rivals, Bone and Makassar. And, uh, let's see, what can we do here, what can we do? I would just like to go for this immediately. Uh, I think we will be getting tech 4 before doing that though. Because uh, it's 11,000 units. Not re really the easiest thing to do. Also, we're going to want to take care of Kendari first. Obviously, I would like to tell Buton to give me his trade power. Because, you know, this land is my land now. And I would like to make full use of my, uh, my clubs here in this trade node. Newborn daughter. People rejoice when they hear the news that a young princess has been born. They have celebrated for days and nights, but you have not named your young daughter the new heir yet. 264. That is very much above average. That is very much above average, and I'll be wanting to get after Illo. I'll be wanting to get influence, so I guess I'll take it. Sure. And her name is going to be Clovely. There you go. Alright, tech 4 achieved. And now we can safely go and continue our conquest of the Sulawesi Islands. Let's go. I'll set bone as a co-belligerent. And it's great that you don't have to check anymore, right? So if you declare war on someone and uh, you set... The set them something as co-belligerent, it will automatically tell you who else is going to join the war. And you can then set those people as co-belligerents, and it will tell you who will join them. And you can get this entire alliance chain, and this doesn't lie, this actually tells you the truth, right? So this is very nice. Uh, you, can, you can just get into war with everyone and their mother, if you really want to. And so for the price of one no CV, you could get into a war with the entirety of Germany, which is very nice. Very convenient if you want to, I don't know, uh, dismantle the HRE uh, with an alliance chain like this. That should be, should be very easy to get into war with all of the electors as well as the emperor. So that's a, that's a potential use for it. Uh, obviously, you will need to fight like half a million troops like this, but uh, that's beside the point, you know. We'll defend our islands, whatever the cost may be. It's <laughs> no, we won't be doing any of that yet, anyway. Alright, well, note to self, make sure we have the uh, Merc Company attached to the main army, not the other way around. <laughs> I don't know where they're running off to. Why are they running into Polypo now? I don't understand. There's nothing for you here, buddy. What? 
Palu. Uh, I don't know if they'll make their way back. We'll see. Alright, well, it seems like uh, Makassar and Bone had a lot of fun with the natives in uh, Gorontalo, and <laughs> they decided to come back <laughs> to try and protect their land. I'm not entirely sure. Of course, they keep running away. We don't know where. Uh, if we chase them... Oh, wait, they're going into Pozo. That's fine. Okay, they're going into Pozo, and the natives are fighting them, so let's just let that happen. Thank you, natives. Very nice. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, I kind of forgot. Now that we have uh, some government reform progress, we can switch into the Mandala system. That should also get me rid of that extra merchant that I have, so my OCD can uh, stop being annoyed at this uh, one free slot uh, that we can't use. So let's move into the Mandala system. Very nice. All right, extra income from vassals and some more force limits. So now we're no, no longer over army force limit. Very nice. Uh, but the most important reason for this uh, government reform is the concentrate development with no losses. Normally when you press this button, hold on, let me see if we can't uh, use that. Um, normally when you press this button, you lose uh, one-third-ish, well, 25%, give or take, uh, depending on rounding and all of that. But you can press this button and then you steal the development from your vassal, or your territory, or your CN, or your tributary. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that you could, the fact that you can use this on tributaries is just so nice. Alright, uh, concentrate development into my land, very nice. Uh, uh, now you do have a penalty to governing capacity, but that's fine. That's fine, because most of the development you steal will go to your capital state, which has a 100% discount on governing capacity cost. You don't really need the governing capacity uh, all that much. The super skyscraper tall gameplay right there. All right, so with all the sieges finally done, we could go piece out the bone right now. And let's make sure all of this is going to Bhutan. Thank you. Could get a little bit of AE, but that's fine. And Makassar as well. Let me just feed all of this to Bhutan because one state challenge, obviously. And let's go send that offer. Boom. All right, so now that we completely own this, we could press this button now to concentrate development into our own lands. And we will get nine dev and it's all going to go to our capital. Which is going to be very convenient. Uh, I'm not going to press this button just yet. I'm going to have a little bit of patience here. Because we still need to dev push for renaissance. And if I add, um, if I start funneling in a dev into my land right now. Then it's just going to get more expensive to dev. But it won't actually give me the renaissance progress. So for now I'm just going to go uh, wait and dev a little bit more first. And then move on later. Right, so seeing as how we don't have a, a colonist yet, and we need Bhutan to fabricate claims on us, I think uh, <laughs> we'll be uh, skipping ahead in time here a little bit. Basically, it's all in Bhutan's hands now. <laughs> I'm gonna need Bhutan to go fabricate a claim. Uh, either that, or we need to go get a colonist, uh, which we won't have until we can finish the rest of these uh, missions here. Now, I believe once we once this province finishes colonizing, we'll get another event. That we, so that we can select another province. Maybe we can go uh, fabricate on Manado and then we can fabricate on Mangindano. So, Maga Mangindano. Ah! Look at that! First try, a Halmahera has changed the clubs. Very nice. Give me that eight docket trade good. Whoa, 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 what's this? Maisha Pahit has proven itself unable to govern even its holdings on Java. A rival state calling itself the Sultan of Mataram has emerged on the southern state of the island and has laid claim to the legacy of the empire. The Sultana can do little but watch as her empire collapses around her. My goodness, wow, okay. And he has Seuss with them too. Hello. Man, I can't wait to get to Java, man. There's so much dev here now for us to yoink. I can't wait. Oh boy, in a surprising turn of events, we've discovered that the Ming Emperor was personally leading his army into battle. Capture of the Ming Emperor. Ding. I don't think Oirat can actually win that war. I don't think I've ever seen that really happen. That would be kind of sad, because I almost have 10 favors on Ming, and i really like to steal 500 dockets. Hey, right, we can get the Tech 5, and still get the innovativeness from that. I don't have Renaissance, but uh, I can't afford to wait. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to get there, so let's just go grab this innovativeness. Very nice. And obviously our first idea is going to be innovative. Like we said, we're going to try to get 100, 100 innovativeness, and then we'll ditch it 
Alright, so I'm not entirely sure how, but we got the 15 favors on our vassal here that we can uh, trade for trust. Get 5 trust for 10 favors, which is going to lower the liberty desire. I guess if we had uh, many free diplomats, we could use them to uh, curry favor all the time. On him. And given our super high relations, that should generate favors quite quickly. Yes. So... And then we'll just use those to get more trust with our vassal, which will uh, lower the liberty desire. Very nice. Right, cool. And we have our 10 favorites on Ming. Of course, I would love to ask him for dockets right now, but uh, he's at war, so we can't. We're not allowed yet. I need him to peace out of the Oirat War, and this Oirat War is going to take quite some time, I feel like. Alright, so we can get the first innovative ideas and get two innovative... It's just so nice that this, is, this basically just got doubled. And so when we add 50% to that, it's so, so much value, man. Like, you can get innovativeness so quickly. Like, look at this. It's 1459 and we have 15 innovativeness. And I, I only got, like, two texts, too. Like, we didn't even get all of them. I'm, at the same time, I'm delving for Renaissance, which is crazy to think about. And there we go. 19 dip. And, wow, this is... <laughs> Man, these clubs, it's like a gold mine, dude. Well, oh, it's not exactly like a gold mine. I think a gold mine with 19 dev will make a bit more. Make probably like 10 dockets. But this is inflation free, so very nice. I love me some clubs. We have a renaissance. Uh, that is good. So now that we have a renaissance, I'm not going to dev uh, Ternati anymore for um, institutions. So now that we have that, we can use this fancy fancy button. Concentrate development. This state will lose 9 dev. Much of the development loss will end up in our capital. It's going to distribute it across my states, but because we only have one state, it will mostly go here. And I think it's all going to go into Ternati, so let's see. Uh, plus 9 would be uh, would be 3 and 6, so 46 dev. Let's see what it does. Now this is, of course, quite hefty on the Liberty Desire and the Opinion Malice, but uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Let's, uh, it's well worth it, I'd say. Filthy vassals are disloyal anyway. And uh, we actually almost got all of it there. Uh, two of the dev went to Halmahira and Tidor. I think it just went to Tidor because Halmahira is uh, is not even finished colonizing. So there you go. Oh boy, Ming Beast, Ming Beast, Ming Beast, Ming Beast, Ming Beast, Ming Beast, Ming Beast out. All right, and we have ten favors. We've got thirteen favors on Ming. So Ming, could you please pay off my debt for me? 10 favors for 6 months of income. I'll take it all the way to the bank. Very nice. 500 dollars just like that. And that's all of a sudden, that's all of my debt gone. Look at that. that Isn't that just pretty? Lovely. Very nice. Alright, and we also have some extra favors on Bhutan. So let's uh, trade favors for trust. We can also reduce opinion. Uh, what does that do? Oh boy. We will ask Bhutan to change their opinion of Bahmanis by negative 100. Negative 100. You can break alliances like this. Damn. You can also just ask to break alliance, but he's a subject, so... That's... Wait, hold on. Okay, you need to be allied to do that. And you need 50 favors. Whoa, 50 favors? To break alliance? But it's, it's 10 favors for negative 100. Negative 100 isn't a guaranteed alliance break, though. Only if the alliance is shaky at best. Progress relative as heir. Spend 90 favors in exchange for installing a member of our dynasty as their heir. Wow. Wow. And they need to not have an heir for this. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. But 90 favors, that's gonna take a long time. Unless you actually help people with wars, that's not really gonna help. But uh, I'll gladly take the trust though. Alright, so that's innovative this gain plus 50%. So now everything that we get from this point onwards is gonna be plus three, which is sick. Look at this! Six innovativeness from one technology. Crazy. Actually stupid. Wow, okay, that's very nice. Alright, so... Seeing as how Bhutan didn't really get the memo, uh, we are going to go and colonize... Uh, this next province over in Manado, so that we can fabricate on... Uh, the Philippines, because... <laughs> otherwise we won't be doing anything for, like, forever. So, uh, let's go here. I would like to colonize Manado. Yes that thing. Thank you. Cool beans. Uh, we will need to like actually deal with the natives here, but that's okay. 
So I think as long as I don't uh, statify this province after it's done, uh, I think it's still sort of you know in, in tune with the uh, with the challenge, I guess. Uh, but uh, I mean, I'm not gonna not colonize, right? So, alright, let's go fabricate on Magadu. He's in a trade league with Manila. All right, so take a look at this, right? So if I decide to fight Magindanao and we set Manila as a co-belligerent, that will bring in Tondu and Cebu. So then if we add Tondu, it's going to add Majas and Botuan. If we add Cebu, okay, this is going to add Sulu and Kutai. Besides, Cebu is only an OPM, so it's not that big of a deal to set him as a co-belligerent. But how about we set Majas and Butawan as co-belligerents now as well. So now this will allow me to get into war with all of these people at the same time. Uh, they're all being considered co-belligerents. No one else is going to join in. It's so easy to see what, what you're going to be at war with. And this is also going to allow for like combinations of wars that wouldn't normally be possible because of truces, right? So this is actually really convenient. Wow, I love this. Way to go, Paradox. Very nice. Cool. Yeah, so like adding Cebu right here would add Sulu and Kutai, which you can you can, can keep moving, right? Until you're at war with the entire world, but uh, let's not do that. This is fine. This is great. Uh, I will need to build some more heavy ships for this and uh, just in general get a little bit more powerful, but this is the war we'll be fighting uh, soon enough. All right, so I just checked and it didn't have too many boats, so we're already just going to declare the war and we're going to start to whittle down the uh, their navies. I need to get full naval superiority and then we'll island trap all of them. Uh, somehow, and then we'll, uh, we'll just have this uh, in the bag, I'm sure. Let's go! Alright, so now that we've gotten naval superiority, we need to go figure out which one of these countries we're going to vassalize. And I think we're going to vassalize Manila. They don't have a lot of dev, but they are animist, which is good for us. Uh, we could also decide to vassalize Magadanao. But I'm gonna want to piece him out last because he's the war leader, right? So I think I'm just gonna vassalize Manila and feed him all the rest of the land. And uh, that should be okay. Alright. Manila occupied. Uh, vassalize him. Yep. And rivalry, money. Good, good, good. Let's go. Alright, so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna piece out Tondu. Now I'm gonna take the land for myself. I'll give it over to Manila after the war. It's maybe kind of sketchy, but uh, ah, well, whatever. I can't give it to Manila directly and I don't want to feed it to Bhutan. So I'll just uh, take it right now so I can feed it to Manila later. Right. Let's go. And we can get rid of estate statutory rights right now. Very nice. And strong duchies. All right, stacked up twice in a row. Oh wow! Oh, that is, oh that that is nice. That's perfect calculation there. And we finally have uh, Tech Six with new units. Uh, our enemies don't have Tech Six, so we don't even need to do any island traffic. It's kind of difficult to island trap them though, because they don't appear to want to walk through the uncolonized terrain like they used to. Um, so you can't actually uh, troll them, and you're gonna need to really like actually land on these. Which I I know I know it's it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest, it's the weirdest thing, actually you need to fight your enemies. Can you imagine? No, he wasn't a co-belligerent. I guess it doesn't really matter, we'll just eat Cebu as well. Let's go. Hey, splendor ability, just to fight wars, don't mind if I do. Alright, Butawan secure it. I'm just gonna piece him out right now, and then he's gonna turn into rebels on top of uh, the other troops, so this should be, uh, <laughs> this should be good. Alright, well thank you Butawan, very nice. I'll take it all the way to the back. Alright, Smagat now occupied. Let me just grab all of my dudes, deal with that one rebellion up there, and then we'll finally have this war over. How long did this take? It took me 10 whole years. <laughs> but it only took us 10 years because we've, uh, you know, we've been occupying all of them. Uh, so it's basically, it took us 10 years to conquer the Philippines, which, you know, is not, not the end of the world. Alright, let's go, boys. Let's go grab this. Very nice. Alright, so now let's give all of this land over to Manila. And the moment we do, we're gonna steal the land, right? Actually, I could steal the land right now before giving it to Manila, so it's uh, easier. So, for example, this place we can concentrate development into our lands, and then we'll get uh, four dev. So, concentrate development into our lands. And this should almost all go to my capital. 47, yeah, 48. 
51. All right, well, seeing as how we're completely out of manpower, I'd like six months' supply of uh, soldiers from Ming instead, because at least he'll be giving us this, and we'll have the troops immediately, which is going to be very convenient. All right, so now that we have that occupied, we can go grant all of this land away to uh, our glorious vassal. Here you go. And because I uh, concentrated development before giving it to Manila, I don't actually have that much uh, liberty desire malice on him. Which is actually really useful for us. Alright, so... Manila, would you... Are you giving me trade power? You are. Now let's take a look at our capital. So now we have a 57 dev capital in 1474. Hey, right, very nice. So our colony finished. We can go concentrate development into our own lands. Seems like we just get 20% and it all will go into my capital. Now we do have some government reform progress that we could use to uh, centralize the state, which is going to lower the governing cost. Because it's in my capital state, I don't really need to do that because it's already negative 100%. <laughs> Woo! Lovely the first Gaffy! Very nice! Yeah, so Malika definitely, or Pasai, definitely uh, pillaged Banjo. So it seems like the AI use, uses this as well. That's pretty cool. You can see because the, the cooldown is exactly 50 years from right now and they just beast out like yesterday. So, well actually today. So, uh, and then you can't use concentrate development on it again, but you can still pillage. There's no cooldown on pillaging. You can always pillage it, but I, if I were to vassalize Banjo right now, then I wouldn't be able to, uh, to pillage this land. So I've got call for pizza now, uh, that's alright, you know, we only have one province, or one state, so... <laughs> more exhaustion, more exhaustion, I'd say. Oh, look at that, we can see the Mamluks, and we can also see the Pyramid of Cheops. Cheops? Cheops? Cheops. Shops? Shop shops. Um, you need to be pagan for... for... to have the... for this to have any effect. Uh, so the Mamluks doesn't get, like, 15% tech cost reduction at the start of the game, obviously. Uh, but if we were to conquer it, and uh, we spend a little bit of money, which you can you can upgrade this uh, really quickly. Like you can spend uh, a thousand ducats, right? And then you need to spend uh, four times three hundred, so you need to spend two thousand two hundred ducats, and then you can instantly upgrade it, which is very nice. Uh, so you do that three times, and then you get ten percent tech cost reduction and plus one monthly admin power. You do need to be pagan though, so like. Uh, a lot of those wonders have a religion uh, requirement, especially the really powerful ones. And, you know, Pagan is not the greatest of religions, but... Cool, cool, cool. I am looking forward to a uh, monument stacking campaign, for sure. Uh, you can also relocate some wonders, but obviously you can't relocate the, the pyramids, because the pyramids cannot be moved. It is too large. Okay, there you go. Alright, well, I'm happy with this. Uh, wait, am I? Hold on, let's take a look at the state. So, actually, I should be taking... Uh, Things by states, right? My goodness, pillaging his capital is only nine war score, and so you pay one AE for every dev. Huh. Okay, but then we can't touch the capital state. But that's pretty good value, though. Like, that's actually really nice. Because it's only nine war score, it's 17 dev, it's, you get nine dev. You can still demand his other problems, it's just not anything in the capital state. Yeah, sure, why not? This seems like a good deal. And we'll ask for a little bit of money as well. So, very nice. All right, uh, let me concentrate dev here. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. This doesn't work, right? Because half of the provinces are under control of Bhutan. I still haven't uh, burned this one. I still haven't burned this one. So if I wanted to get all of the development, I would have to give it over to Bhutan first. Like this. And then I can seize everything in the entire state and we get eight dev. Now that does mean that I'll piss off Bhutan more, but I'll take it. I'll no what we need to speak of. Oh, uh, also, let's not forget, we can release uh, Maisha Pahit now. It will follow the Hindu faith and the Javanese culture. Very interesting. Whoa! -hoo! Okay. <laughs> Maybe Maisha Pahit is not the... <laughs> They're quite happy. We could uh, be extracting tribute now, and then for 20 years we'll get plus 100% income of vassals. Oh boy. Ternati now has 81 development from that recent set uh, from our conquest of Borneo. 81 dev. Uh, this is really gonna jump up to like 300 or something before the end of this. This is actually crazy. Like, I've got 123 dev with three provinces. Yeah, you know what? Let's just click this. It's gonna. Let, let's see how much money this is going to be. Your vassals are required to pay 53% of their monthly tax. Oh, what? 
Your vassals are required to pay 153% of their monthly tax to you. <laughs> He's actually gonna go into debt to pay the vassal fee. This is beautiful. Okay, well, he collapsed the rebels. I hope he's okay now. All right, well, I'd like to yoink the remainder of Java as a little bit of a finale here. So let me just uh, get right on that. I would like to take Karta. Now they are allied to a Utaya, which uh, I would normally never be able to beat in a situation like this, but uh, we could probably do some island trapping shenanigans, maybe. But hopefully lure Sunda over to Sumatra and then block off the strait that way. Oh! Oh, well that's interesting. Oh, 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 oh my. There is no strait in between Java and Sumatra anymore. That's okay. <laughs> I'm making so much freaking money right now. This is crazy. Look at how much fucking... <laughs> Seven, 42 dockets as with one... <laughs> <laughs> One state. I guess you could say I'm clubbing it. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. This this whole concentrate dev strat with uh, an OPM with with clubs is is pretty nice. I I have to say, and uh, my governing capacity is five. Like I'm using five, not not fifty, not five hundred, no five. And, uh, you know, we're keeping up in tech. I've got all of that pretty much secured. That's all very nice. I'm getting all the innovativeness. We have 32 innovativeness in uh, 1491. Pretty good. Okay, let's get mill access to Malak. I mean, we can lure the Ayutthayan uh, military over into Sumatra. That'd be really nice. And he's going. He's coming with 18k. Let's see. Uh, I don't necessarily want to lose these troops, though. So let's try and get these guys out of here. Come on, Ayutaya here, kitty kitty. Ah, there he is. He's followed us. Uh, we can't run, unfortunately. We'll treat across the pond now. So that's 20k Ayutayans in Siak. Which means... Which means... Ayutaya, Central Thailand, is going to be burned to a crisp and brought into my... Cloving arms in Ternati. Now we are starting to reach the edge of what is gonna be uh, uh, feasible. I wouldn't say possible because you could totally do a world conquest with this strategy, but we're hitting the edge of what is going to be feasible uh, given um, the fact that we we have three merc companies to work with. So I'd either have to allow for territory so that we can unlock new merc companies or uh, use more tributaries, I guess, so that we can spam some uh, some of that tribute that where they give uh, manpower. But yeah, even if we get like a monstrous capital, it seems like all the dev that we're getting is mostly uh, admin and dip. Uh, and so we're not getting a lot of manpower. All right then, but we have 100% war score on Sunda. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, if I had more time, I would totally, uh, I would totally trap on Yutaya on uh, on Sumatra here. But we could probably island trap him if we have more time. I just don't have any more time IRL right now, so I can't. <laughs> I, I'm not. I can't. Uh, I can't pillage. I can't pillage a Yutaya. Not today. We'll have to do that on stream. Uh, what I also want to do is um, take the mandate of Ming and then just like actually take the mandate CB, right? Yoink the mandate and then we can tributize Ming. Because if you tributize people, let's do it. Right? So now I can actually. <laughs> I can also steal his development. And I'll take everything, right? So his entire country can now be concentrated. And so now we have 106 dev province. Imagine doing that, right? On China. Uh, it would instantly give me like... 360 dev or something. Uh, let's, let's have a think, right? So we take about 20% of his land. Well, that would be like 300 dev. 300 dev capital. And that would only be the beginning. Like, we could do that... Uh, in a relatively timely fashion. The thing is, I'm kind of out of manpower, and island trapping mean would take a really long time. So, uh, not gonna be doing that today. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me do that live on stream. Uh, the thing is, we have to take the mandate first before we do that, because you can't just no CB Ming and tributize him. If that doesn't work. We have to take the mandate first. I'm pretty sure. I don't think... Well, hold on. Let's, let's test. 
Yeah, no. Uh, so we have to take the, the mandate first and then steal all of Ming. So that's going to be very nice. Um, yeah, so anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the, today's video. Uh, please be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also follow me on Twitch if you'd like to see the conclusion of this. Um, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, bada bing, bada bing, bada bang, bada bang. I don't know how to talk if I'm not in front of a live audience, so thank you for watching. Bada ba ba ba, I'm clawing it. Also, thank you, Paradox, for, <laughs> for sponsoring this video. <laughs> oh man, I need chat with me. Otherwise, I don't function properly, but that's okay. It's okay. I hope I hope I showed lots of features for the uh, Leviathan updates. Uh, check the link down below to uh, buy Leviathan. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't shown uh, about, the, especially with monuments that I'd like to use and abuse a little bit more. But uh, well, we'll have to see how exactly we're gonna be doing that uh but yeah anyway i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys uh, next time so uh bye, bye have a good one